What's going on, smart people? If you don't know by now, I am not a huge fan of memorizing things. I always go through the derivations of equations because I'll probably forget what it is exactly, and it's nice to know how to derive it from scratch if I need to, which just so happens to be always for me. But for certain equations, like the Laplacian and different coordinate systems, sure, you can go through the derivation from scratch, and after pages of algebra arrive at the Laplacian, but that's a huge pain in the ass. So today I want to show you a middleman between that, a middleman between memorization and derivation. I'm going to be giving you an equation to memorize. You can derive it too for yourself if you'd like to, and in a future video I will be deriving it. But if you can remember this one equation, it makes the derivation of the Laplacian in spherical and cylindrical coordinates just so much easier. The only caveat is that it requires that you know a little bit of tensor calculus, things like the metric tensor and the determinant of the metric tensor. But other than that, it's really straightforward stuff. I'll be showing you the procedure of going through it anyways. And for what we're going to be doing today is this is the Laplacian in cylindrical coordinates. This is the equation I say that we're going to be working with. This is the one that I remember, and it's what I always use to get to the Laplacian in spherical or cylindrical coordinates if I don't have the Griffiths textbook next to me. Um, this here is the contravariant component of the metric tensor. This is square root of the determinant of the metric tensor, the covariant one. Uh, and we're going to be finding out how to calculate these terms and see if using this equation we arrive at the Laplacian in cylindrical coordinates. So even though we're going to be working towards the Laplacian in cylindrical, the equation itself does not change for deriving it in spherical, which is why you get two things for one memorization, which is pretty, pretty powerful. Okay, so first things first is how do we calculate these terms? Well, if we start off with our position vector in Cartesian coordinates, say x e sub x plus y e sub y plus z e sub z, okay, uh, we want to write this in terms of cylindrical coordinates. In cylindrical coordinates, we know that x is equal to r cosine phi, y is equal to r sine phi, and z doesn't change. Great. Substitute this into our position vector, and we get that r is equal to r cosine phi e sub x plus r sine phi e sub y plus z e sub z. Great. Now we want to define our basis vectors in cylindrical coordinates, and all you do to find those is we take the derivatives of this position vector with respect to those different coordinates. So if we want to find e sub r unnormalized, so we're not worrying about normalization in this derivation, this is just going to be dr, dr, which is equal to cosine phi e sub x plus uh, sine phi e sub y. Okay, same thing goes for e sub theta, or e sub phi, sorry. And this is not hat, it's not necessarily a unit vector. dr, d phi, okay, minus r sine phi e sub x, uh, plus r cosine phi e sub y. There we go. And the last one is e sub z, which also does not change. Great. And we are making good progress here, so this is just e sub z. The gij's that we see here, first we have to calculate the downstairs metric tensor, the covariant metric tensor. And the way to do that is just to just evaluate the dot products of these basis vectors. Now, the powerful part about this is that since we're working in an orthogonal system, all of the off-diagonal components of this dot product are just going to be zero. So we only have to evaluate the ones where i is equal to j. So, in other words, g r r is equal to e sub r dot e sub r which is equal to, well that's cosine squared plus sine squared, which is equal to 1. g phi phi is equal to, that's going to give us an r squared, and then sine squared plus cosine squared, so it's just going to give us an r squared. And then g uh, z z is just going to give us 1. And since we're working in an orthogonal coordinate system, all of the off diagonals, so things like g r phi, or g phi z are going to be zero. So we can collect all of this into a matrix that I will write as g i j, and I'm gonna put this little bracket around it to say that we're looking at the matrix. Otherwise, we're just looking at matrix elements. This is equal to 
1, 0, 0, 0, r squared, 0, 0, 0, 1. Great. We're making progress. Now, we don't want the downstairs, we don't want the covariant metric tensor. We need it to be contravariant. And the great thing about the metric tensor is that its inverse is the contravariant metric tensor. So if we do, say, g i j g j k, this is equal to whoops, delta k i. Okay, so we just need to invert this matrix in order to get this g i j. Since we have a diagonal matrix of this, this is extremely easy to invert. The inverse of this is just, so g i j up top is just 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 over r squared, 0, 0, 0, 1. All this means is if you multiply these two matrices together, you get the identity matrix, and that's pretty easy to see. Everything, that's just going to give us 1, that's going to give us 1, that's going to give us 1. Awesome. The last thing that we have to calculate before we can finally start plugging stuff into this equation is this root g. Root g, well g in general, is the determinant of the metric tensor. And since we have a diagonal matrix here, the determinant of the metric tensor is just the product of its diagonal components. So g is just equal to root g. We've got, and this is going to be the determinant of the covariant metric tensor. So we're still looking at this one. So we've got 1 times r squared times 1, and then we're taking the square root of it, that's going to give us an r. Perfect. Now we're ready. Now we can substitute this into this equation. I'm going to write this over here. So root g is equal to r. Yeah, just to reiterate, so the determinant of the metric tensor refers to being uh, the determinant of the covariant metric tensor. Okay, so you're not doing that with this one here. That's important. Now let's substitute all this stuff into this equation to see if we do in fact get the Laplacian in cylindrical coordinates. I made myself some space and erased the unit vectors because I figured you know what those are. Um, yes, so del squared is equal to 1 over root g, which is 1 over r, dxi, so we're summing over i and j. Now we could brute force our way through this or we could be a little bit smarter. If we just brute force our way through it, this is going to have nine terms and we're going to feel silly because six of those nine terms will give us zero. So we're only actually interested in the ones for i equal to j because those are the ones that are actually going to be contributing. So if we have something that says x1, d dx1, so it's the derivative with respect to the first coordinate. Well, that's just corresponding to the r. So this is just r, d d r. Similarly, if we have d d x2, that's d d phi, and so on. And if we're saying that i is equal to 1, then since the only ones that are going to contribute are the ones for i equal to j, that also will tell us that j equals 1, because we're just looking at diagonals here. So this is going to give us, let me write this a little bit farther down. This is del squared is equal to 1 over r, d over dr. Then we've got our root of the metric. So this is going to give us a r. And then g11, which is 1, times d dr, because j equals i, plus d over d phi r. Now we're looking at 2, 2, which is 1 over r squared, and then d, d phi, and lastly, d over dz, r, 3, 3 is going to give us a 1, and a d, dz. Let's do some cancellations, pretty this up a bit, and we get that del squared is equal to 1 over r, d, d, r, r, d, d, r, Plus, so this just cancels one of these factors, so we get it plus 1 over r. Um, and then one of these 1 over r's gets multiplied by this 1 over r, so we get a 1 over r squared. That looks like a v. So we get r times 1 over r squared, 1 over r times 1 over r. And then we've got a d squared, d phi squared, because this is just blind to the r's, plus and then this z is blind to the r, and that r will cancel with this r, and we get a d squared dz squared.
And there is the Laplacian insulinological coordinates from this tensor notation equation. Let me know in the comments section if you'd like to see a video where I derive this equation. Uh, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Hopefully it'll save you some time on the next exam where you were supposed to remember what the Laplacian and spherical coordinates is or something like that. So let me know in the comments section if you want to see this bad boy derived. And I will see you guys there.